Hi everybody and welcome to the first video in Calculus and Vectors. Today we are learning a skill called um, rationalizing the denominator or rationalizing the numerator. So basically this is just um, a little precursor of algebra knowledge that you'll need to be able to um, simplify limits and derivatives later on. So um, basically in in math, we don't like to have anything with a square root sign in the denominator of a fraction, okay? Just like it would look weird to have, for instance, a decimal on the denominator of a fraction. So, for example, if you had 1 over 2.5, you would multiply both the top and the bottom by 2 to get 2 out of 5. All right, so basically we do something similar with radical expressions so that they look a little bit nicer and we can work with them. Okay, so I hope this is working. It's saying I might have lost some audio. All right, so let's start with some basic facts about radicals to refresh our memory. So let's remember that if you have the root of A times the root of B, that is just equal to, sorry, right here, the root of AB. Okay, so when you're multiplying two roots together, you can just put those multiples under one root. And the same thing with division. So if it's a, root A divided by root B, that's the same thing as root A over B. So for example, if you have root 2 times root 32, that's the same thing as root 2 times 32, which is just root 64, which is in fact just 8. Okay, and if you have root 27 divided by root 3, that's the same thing as root 27 over 3. So root 9, which is 3. Okay, so remember that you can also simplify a radical number by turning the radical into the multiplication of two radicals, where one argument is a perfect square. So remember if you have something like the root of 24, this is actually not in lowest terms. So just like 2 over 8, I wouldn't accept that as a final answer because it's really one quarter. This also is not really a final answer because it's not simplified. So we see something like this. You have to consider, can this number 24 be written as a factor of two numbers where one of the numbers is a perfect square? And hence, you can take the square root of it. So 24 obviously has a lot of factors, but the one is the perfect square is 4. That's the highest factor of 24, but also a perfect square. So we can rewrite this as the product of 4 times 6. And so that can be then rewritten as the root of 4 times the root of 6. So that is just 2 root 6. And you know that it's in lowest terms when whatever is under the square root has no factors um, that are perfect squares, so you can't go any further. So now we move on to rationalizing denominators. Okay, so um, in calculus, we need to simplify expressions with radicals in the denominator. So recall that a rational number is a number expressed as a fraction of two integers. So the process of changing a denominator from radical to an integer is called rationalizing the denominator. And it's really fun. <laughs> okay, so this is just because we like to divide by an integer rather than a radical. So in this fraction, we have a radical in the denominator that we would like to be an integer instead. So we want to eliminate this root too. That's the part of this that we don't like. So what we do is that we take our three over 5 root 2 and the way to get root 2 to not be a root is to multiply it by itself because a root by itself uh, you just take out out the root then so root 2 times root 2 is just 2 but remember we can't we're not magicians we're mathematicians so uh, we can only multiply it by 1 so that we don't change its value so multiplying it by root 2 over the over root 2 is essentially just multiplying this by 1, except it will be able to get this root out of the denominator. So the top end simply just becomes 3 root 2. You can't really do much with that. But watch what happens on the bottom. You get 5 
times root 2 times root 2. Well, root 2 times root 2 is just 2. So you get 5 times 2. So you get 3 root 2 over 10. And now if these two were, uh, if I was able to uh, reduce the 3 and the 10, I would at this point. But that 3 over 10 is a, is a reduced fraction, so I can't do anything else there. So the rule is here, if I have a over k times root b, I want to multiply it by root b over root b. And then I'm left with, sorry about this limited mode thing. So a root b divided by kb. That's what you get. Okay. So what if your denominator has two terms? So in that first example, our numerator, or sorry, our denominator was just one term, but what if there are two terms? Um, well, here we use something called the conjugate. So a conjugate is, if you have root A plus root B, its conjugate is root A minus root B. So the same two numbers, just with the opposite sign in between them. So why do we care about this? Well, remember when we eliminate linear terms, if we have a plus b times a minus b, what happens? So these are actually conjugate terms, a plus b and a minus b. And when you actually expand this out, you get a squared minus b squared. So you're just squaring each of the terms and the middle term goes away. So watch what happens here. When we multiply root a plus root b times root a minus root b, Okay, if we actually want to foil this out just to really show what's going on, you get root a times root a, which is just a, and then minus root a root b plus root a root b. Okay, and then minus b, because root b times root b is just b. So notice that this section, you're just adding and subtracting the same thing. So you're actually just left with a minus b. So that's why multiplying by the conjugate is useful because you are just are left with integers. Okay, so let's take a look at two different examples here. So let's do 2 divided by root 6 plus root 3. Okay, so if we want to rationalize the denominator, we need to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So the conjugate of the denominator is root 6 minus root 3. And then to make this 1, we have to multiply the same thing on the top. Okay. So you're left with 2 bracket root 6 minus root 3. But then on the bottom, because of the conjugate uh, multiplication rule, you're just left with, well, root 6 times root 6 is 6 then the middle FOIL stuff will go away. And then root 3 times minus root 3 is just minus 3. So you're left with 2 root 6 minus 2 root 3 all over 3. Or you can keep the numerator looking the same. It doesn't actually matter. Okay, one more example. So let's say we have 5 over 2 root 6 plus 3. Okay, so again, we have a two-term denominator, so we want to multiply by its conjugate. So its conjugate is 2 root 6 minus 3, and so we have to do the same thing to the top, 2 root 6 minus 3. Okay, so what are you left with? Well, be careful here. So on the top, you can just leave it as 5 bracket 2 root 6 minus 3. You can just leave that like that. But on the bottom, what happens? Well, you get 2 root 6 times 2 root 6. So you have to think about this as the 2 times the 2 becomes 4, and the root 6 times the root 6 becomes just 6. Okay, the middle terms cancel out, and then you get 3 times minus 3, which is minus 9. So what you're left with here is 5 bracket root 2, 6 minus 3 
sorry, not root two six. Um, where do I erase here? Um, two root six. Oops. Come on. Two root six minus three all over 24 minus nine is 15. So I just like this because notice the five and the 15 can be reduced to one and three. So then you're just left with two root six minus three all over three. Okay, and that cannot be reduced any further. So that is the fully rationalized um, fraction. So your rule here for these is step one, you find the conjugate, find the conjugate. Okay, so step two, you take your A and over your B times conjugate of B divided by conjugate of B. And then your step three is that you just simplify. As we look at our algebra knowledge, right? Okay, and so that's all you do. So notice a few of the questions will actually ask you to rationalize the numerator. Don't let that scare you. That just means they want the numerator to be all in terms of integers instead of the denominator. So just make sure you read what it is the question's asking and go over your success criteria. So can I rationalize the denominator of one term, recognize the conjugate of a two-term radical, and use it to rationalize a denominator or a numerator? And then finally, simplify a rational expression that has radical in it. Okay, so that's just our little algebra lesson to get us ready for what we're about to do with limits. And uh, yeah, now you're all set. So practice that a lot so, you're, so you know how to use it when it comes up in your work. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned lots.